Hey guys, how's it going? Scott here from scottsbasslessons.com. Hope you're well. If you haven't subscribed to the YouTube channel, by the way, get on it, subscribe, and then you'll be notified every time I release a cool video just like this. Today, I want to talk about what I call the seesaw. And it's something that I see uh, a lot of beginners players suffering with and some intermediates as well. So here's the deal. Here's the bad habit that some people suffer from, okay? Let's take a major scale. Let's take the C major scale. Okay, now what happens is that people get used to or sometimes just start off doing this. They'll play one note and as they play the next note, the fingers will come off, okay? So I'm just gonna do it from this side. They'll play this, one, and then as they play the next note, the fingers come off. Then they play the next note, and then they play the next note, and this finger comes off, and then this finger comes off. So you get this kind of effect. Okay, from the front. So when one finger goes down, the other, all the rest bob up, okay? What? It's like one of those lizards. Do you know when the lizard sits on the hot stand and it's got like two feet up and then it waits for 10 seconds and then the other two feet come up and the other two feet go down? You know, it's like they've got that going on with their hands, right? Um, and obviously it's a really, it's a bad habit to get into. Don't worry if this is happening to you. It is easily fixable. Um, you just got to dig in and, and keep going for it. So I'm going to share a cool exercise with you today to really um, try and nip this in the bud. All I want you to do is use a C major scale. I'm going to talk you through this slowly because it's a little tricky, okay? So let's, you know, just let's make sure that we've got the C major scale down. It's fingers 2, 4, 1, 2, 4, 1, 3, 4. And it starts on obviously the C. If you are struggling with that stretch, you can always do it on G here. Okay. You can just use the G major there. Okay, it'll be a little bit of an easier stretch for you. But we're going to do it in C. Here we go. So I want you to play the note, the C. As you play the D, I want you to keep the C down. Okay, so make sure that it's not springing up okay so now I want you to move your index finger over to the E on the A string and as you play that I want you to keep your fourth finger down you're muting it with your thumb here okay so so these aren't it's not doing this that is as you play that E make sure your thumb is resting on the E string okay now what now I want you to move your middle finger to the F okay so this little finger is still on the D now move that little finger to the G now, first finger to the A, keep those, the second and the fourth finger down. Then, you bring in the third finger over, playing the B. The fourth finger is still on the G. And then, play the C. So here we go, super slow. C, D, you keep that D held on. F, then you move. Then the A, but you keep the other fingers on. B, then you move. There I've gone right down to the F, okay, so. Now you wouldn't do this in practice, okay? You wouldn't play like this, I'm, I can play up to speed. <laughs> okay, you wouldn't play like this in practice. But what this exercise does is just, it reinforces that muscle, that memory, the, um, the motor movement that you're focusing on, okay? It breaks the chain. It stops you doing this thing where you're just moving, you know, one finger goes up, down, the others go up. Another finger goes down, the other fingers go up, okay? It's stopping that happening. So again, just super slow. down.
you get some ringing on the way down. Um, when you practice it, you'll see why. So again, what you're doing here is you're playing the notes, but as you play them, you hold that note down until you have to move your finger to the next. Well, you have to move that finger and use it, okay? So when I play here, until I, I this, this uh, D I'm holding down here, that finger is not being used until I play this G. So I hold it down until I have to play it, and then again, and then again. Okay, you can try and speed it up, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't stress too much about speeding it up. It's just about getting that control. And you can use this in you know, various scales, but the thing is that you shouldn't really be concentrating on the scale so much. It's just getting that control so you can do this type of movement. It's super hard. One thing you do have to be aware of is the mutant as well. What I'm doing with mine here is I'm kind of moving it across. So I start the thumb on the E string and then I move it to the A string and then it kind of stays on the A string for the rest of it. Again, it's not this, I'm not. That's just me playing freely there. It's this. And what this will do is it'll just get your, you know, get the motor co cortex and uh, pumping some iron essentially and uh, and really make it focus and really just stop you doing the the seesaw thing you can do this um, exercise as well i did a, a lesson called flying fingers where i talk about using uh, you know fingering patterns such as this so that's just sort of like one finger per fret one two three four one two three four one two three four one two three four and you can use the same system so one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Did you see what I did there? I'm not moving my fingers until I have to use them. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. That's about the maximum speed that you should be aiming for. But I'd really try and recommend doing this. The reason why we slow these things down, guys, is because it's actually, what you're trying to do is teach your motor cortex, okay? The motor cortex of the brain, the movement. It's actually got nothing to do with you wanting to do the movement, okay? because that's how these things work, okay? Um, we might want to play with great technique, but until the motor, motor cortex of our brain um, learns that movement, then, you know, we're stuffed, we can't do it. So that's why we, we slow it down, because it gives the brain a better chance to actually learn the correct movement that you want to do. And then once it's learned the movement, then it becomes a habit and it's, you know, and it's easy. That's when it becomes easy. So again, I recommend doing it with major scales or the one finger per fret, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, okay? And if you practice that for a few weeks, if you have been suffering from the seesaw thing, it'll have a big, it'll just tighten everything up. Your, your entire technique will be, um, it'll just, just, just trust me, just, just do it. Help me help you. <laughs> what film's that from? <laughs> Jerry Maguire. <laughs> I love that film. Help me help you. <laughs> anyway.
Enough of Jerry Maguire. Uh, thanks for watching to get today, guys. If you have been over to scottspacelessons.com, or if you haven't even, um, I'll put a link below. Check it out. Just click through. Check out the Academy at Scott Space Lessons. It's the coolest online school for bass right now. All the best teachers in the world are teaching there. Um, there's full courses, things like that. And as I said at the beginning of this, I think I burped there. Never burp on YouTube. I think that's the second time I burped on YouTube. Um, and if you haven't subscribed to the, chan the channel yet, the YouTube channel, make sure you do that too. Okay, guys, see you later. And I'll, as always, I'll see you in the shed. Bye. Two thousand and fifteen Kickstarter challenge. Hey everybody. Hey. Hey everybody. Hi everybody. Hello all. Hello.